to the Mariners and I don't know. This is also interesting. It is unique. And it also has a Seahawks tie that we'll get to here in a second. So we jump into it here. Uh, the team claimed right-handed pitcher Colin Snyder off of waivers from the Arizona Diamondbacks at the time that move did fill the 40-man roster. Um, it's another arm. You know, we, we've seen a bunch of different arms added throughout the course of the offseason as the team will look to re replenish that bullpen, uh, find potentially the next uh, diamond in the rough as they have so often uh, with relievers and with pitchers. Where there's guys, obviously, you look at the DePaul Seawall this last year. You look at Gabe Spire, Justin Topa, who was traded. You know, there's more than a few names um, to look at with the Mariners and their pitching factory, so to say. Colin Snyder is interesting. I mean, he's got some stuff um, in terms of his pitching arsenal, and that's obviously what this Mariners pitching staff looks at so often. Uh, he's 28. He made 20 appearances and one start with the Royals last year, uh, including one save and a 4.87 ERA, 13 walks, 11 strikeouts. He was claimed off waivers by Arizona on December 18th. Um, but placed back on waivers shortly after as well. So in two major league seasons with the Royals, uh, the six foot eight ready is four and two with one save and a five nine three ERA. So nothing that necessarily jumps off the page at you. Um, I mean, he hasn't been in the big league super long. As I mentioned, just two seasons in the big leagues there, both of them with the Royals um, getting into their system back in 2017. But, Obviously, there's something that the Mariners staff saw that they liked uh, and they wanted to kick the tires on. It'll be interesting to see, again, if he is going to be the eventual next one that steps up for this Mariners organization that says, hey, you know, <laughs> you've got great stuff. We're going to work on that and we're going to make you a weapon um, out of the bullpen. So moving forward with that, uh, the team roster move that I mentioned that has a Seahawks tie on the 7th, the Mariners claimed outfielder Kanan Smith and Jigba off of waivers from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, that name will sound familiar because Kanan is the older brother of Jackson Smith and Jigba of our Seattle Seahawks that I briefly just talked about. Um, so this was a fun move. I mean, when the Pirates put him on waivers, uh, designated for him, designated him for assignment, there was the thought of Seattle picking him up. Um, and now he does so. I thought maybe it would be just uh, a minor league deal with an invitation to spring training. It is not. So the Mariners claimed the 24-year-old Kanan Smith and Jigba off of waivers. Uh, and as a result, they put Darren McCacken, right-handed pitcher, uh, they designated him for assignment. So uh, we'll talk about McCacken here in a second. But Kanan Smith and Jigba appeared in 15 games uh, at the big league level with the Pirates in 2023, going four for 32 with a double, triple, and five RBIs and a pair of different stints with the big league club. In 105 games with uh, AAA Indianapolis last season, the left-hander hit 280 with 57 runs, 28 doubles, one triple, 15 homers, 74 RBIs, 21 stolen bases, and 53 walks. Uh, as I mentioned, again, the older brother of Jackson Smith and Jigba with our Seahawks. So cool to see the brothers in the same city. Uh, he will likely start the year at least with the, the Rainiers in Tacoma, so in the same vicinity. But you know, interesting to see that with the trade last week for Gregory Santos and losing Zach Deloach, you essentially replace him with Kanan Smith and Jigba, which I'm not necessarily upset with. Um, Darren McCacken, uh, I have a buddy who was a uh, very big Darren McCacken fan, so he's not necessarily happy about that. Uh, the 27-year-old, 27, 27 he made three relief appearances with the big league club in Seattle in 2023. Uh, finishing with a 5.4 ERA. He made 25 starts with the Rainiers last year, going 7-8 and eight, with a 5.83 ERA, 44 walks, and 130 strikeouts. He was originally drafted by the Mariners in the 12th round of the 2017 first-year draft out of Long Beach State um, and has kind of been a mainstay for the Rainiers ever since that point, uh, kind of always a guy that the Mariners had at the ready in AAA in case he needed to be called up. So, that one's kind of fun. Uh, more roster news type stuff for the Mariners after that. The same day, the 7th, the team announced spring training non-roster invitations. Lead-handed pitcher, uh, we'll kind of, you kind of see the list here on your screen. We'll go through a few notable names. Jonathan Diaz, Kirby Sneed were guys that the Mariners added this offseason. And just like with Colin Snyder, uh, will they be the next bullpen pieces for the Mariners? We'll have to see that. Uh, Right-handers, uh, Darren McCacken, though designated for assignment, 
excuse me, by the Mariners there um, the same day was given an invitation to spring training, but later on he would be traded to the Miami Marlins for cash considerations. So that won't be happening. Uh, McCacken does go to Miami. Manny, I'm sorry to tell you that. Uh, but looking at the rest of these pitchers here with uh, invitations to spring training um, that are not a part of the roster, Jimmy Joyce, Travis Kuhn, um, are all got Marcelo Perez. There's a f- more than a few guys who are prospects here, so it'll be interesting to see what they display. Maybe they surprise us. Maybe they move up uh, throughout the system quicker than expected. But mainly what I was looking at with these non-roster invitations to spring training was the position players. You can see Harry Ford uh, in the group of catchers there. Ryan Bliss, who was acquired via trade last year at the deadline. He's done well in Tacoma and thought about as maybe a future potential second baseman there here in Seattle. But obviously with the addition of Jorge Polanco, uh, maybe not quite yet. Uh, A few different guys, Caden Polkovich, uh, Brock Rodden. Uh, Cole Tucker's there. Uh, we talked about him earlier this uh, season, earlier this offseason. Hogan Windish is another uh, minor league guy. Cole Young, one of the top prospects for the Mariners that you can see on your screen here. On uh, the outfield, Spencer Packard, Alberto Rodriguez. Again, it's always fun with the non-roster invitations to see the minor league guys get those calls up um, as well. So you kind of see here uh, with that group, you're kind of getting ready for spring training. You know, pitchers and catchers report in three days for the Mariners uh, and eight days for the whole squad to report. So we're getting closer and closer to spring training, closer and closer to opening day and finding out what that roster will look like by the time that we reach March 28th against the Boston Red Sox at T-Mobile Park. So not a lot of surprises per se. I mean, I didn't necessarily expect to see Darren McCacken gone, but you know, you go out, you essentially find a replacement for Zach Deloach and Kanan Smith and Jigba. Not necessarily mad at it. Again, my friend will not be happy about it because he's a super fan for Darren McCacken. But I mean, it'll be fun to see guys like Cole Young, like Harry Ford in camp and see what they can do. If you think back earlier, a few different guys who have made their name for the Mariners and kind of showed whether it was, you know, the big league club, the front office, that they were ready for that next step. Uh, in recent years, obviously, Julio Rodriguez, Jared Kelnick. So, again, very fun to have th- these younger minor leaguers be able to showcase their talent, you know, and maybe surprise a few folks uh, throughout the organization uh, when it comes to spring training. You know, I don't necessarily think that there will be a lot of surprise here. It kind of seems like the Mariners' big league roster is somewhat set outside of maybe different bench positions and uh, whoever is going to be the mainstay at third base. Maybe there won't be a mainstay consistently. Um, But again, always fun to look at that. Also fun uh, to turn it over here. Um, We have roster new, I'm sorry, not roster, new jersey numbers for a few players. So Jorge Polanco will wear the number seven. Gregory Santos will wear the number 48. Uh, Samad Taylor will wear the number 12. Zebi Zavala will wear the number 33. Colin Snyder, we just talked about, will wear the number 52. All of those guys, new guys. But Brian Wu, after wearing the 33 last year, will wear the number 22. So Wu, 22. Um, always interesting to see different player numbers there. Uh, Luis Torrens, you know, wearing the 22 somewhat consistently the last few years for the Mariners when he's been here. Uh, Jorge Blanco, we're taking the number seven. Obviously, with Marco Gonzalez gone, the number seven is back on the market. Uh, Gregory Santos taking the number 48 um, of, well, from Justin Topa, who was traded in exchange for Jorge Polanco. So kind of fun to see the different roster numbers. No real surprises here um, or n- no super big names, but kind of fun to see Ryan Wu change his number. It was interesting when guys like him and Bryce Miller were called up if they would eventually change their numbers. Now Wu does ahead of 2024. So That's what we've got for the Mariners. As I mentioned, pitchers and catchers report in three days. A lot of fun there in the full squad in um, eight days. But then we go how many days until I think we're 45 days until opening day. 45 days until opening day. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to everything that spring training brings and maybe some more news for that uh, here in a little bit.